Bandages can be a useful tool if applied correctly. They can stem bleeding, minimize infection, protect the wound and provide support. Most of the bandages that we talk about in this section are for short-term use only. If you intend to leave a bandage on for a longer period of time, always check with your vet as an incorrect placed bandage may cause swelling, pain and irritation. Some useful equipment to have to hand for applying bandages includes cotton wool, sterile foam, soft band, conforming bandage, cohesive bandage, tape, blunt end scissors and gloves. Ear bandages are useful as very small injuries to the ear can result in excessive bleeding. Remember ice packs, clotted and corn flour can all help to slow or stop the bleed. Place a piece of sterile foam against the wound, then place the injured ear either flat against the side of the dog's face or up against their head. Flat against their face will help to stop the blood trickling into the ear canal. However, position it whichever way you feel would be of most comfort. Take a conforming bandage and start at the center of your dog's head with the bandage roll on top of the bandage, not underneath. Hold the end of the bandage with your other hand and take the roll over the injured ear and under the dog's throat area. Bring it up, round and in front of the good ear. Repeat this process three or four times. Once again, bring the bandage down and over the injured ear, under the throat and this time behind the good ear in a figure of eight motion, creating a cross effect on top of the dog's head. Repeat this process several times. To secure the bandage, you can just tuck it in. Remember, this is a temporary dressing. Never use safety pins to secure it. Using a cohesive bandage or sticky bandage will secure it further. However, unless you are experienced with its use, avoid as there is a chance you will apply it too tight, causing constriction to the airway. Always make sure you can get two fingers down into the dressing to ensure it's not too tight. Remove the dressing immediately if it affects breathing or causes the dog to become distressed. True or false, if blood leaks through the dressing, you should apply another bandage on top. True, blood leaking through our dressing is given the term strike through. When we see this, take another dressing and apply that on top of the original dressing. Continue to apply dressing after dressing until you stop seeing strike through, but always make sure you haven't applied it too tight. You can use an ice pack in between dressings and this will help to constrict the blood vessels and lower the amount of blood loss. An abdominal bandage could be useful for several reasons. Wounds that you wish to cover or stem bleeding, surgical wounds created during procedures such as a bitch spay where the dog may have licked and pulled at the stitches, and to slow internal bleeding. The bandage is a temporary aid whilst you seek more help. Start midway along the dog's back and work towards their hips. Adopt the approach of overlapping each layer by a half to two thirds, as you should with all dressings. Apply the conforming bandage underneath with a cohesive layer over the top, if you are experienced and confident with using it. Make sure the cohesive dressing doesn't overlap the conforming bandage at the end. Apply tape either side to hold it in place. This is likely to be a short-term bandage, but for longer periods, make sure male dogs can urinate. If you suspect an internal bleed, then you could apply increased pressure when placing the bandage, but always make sure the dog can breathe comfortably. A pressure bandage applied to the abdomen can slow an internal bleed down. Adopt the same rule of making sure you can pass two fingers between the dressing and the dog's skin. Chest bandages aren't commonly used. I would certainly want to use one to cover a puncture wound of unknown origin before traveling to the vets. And again, like any bandages, check it's appropriate to use. You use the same principles for this bandage as you use for an abdominal dressing, only this time you start in the middle of the back and move forward towards the head. 
To avoid the dressing slipping, you can pass it through the front legs and back up over the chest area. A poor bandage is one of the more commonly used dressings. It can be extended to cover wounds higher up the leg. You can use it to stem a bleed, support a ripped dew claw, or to cover a wound such as a cut pad under the guidance of your vet. Bandaging a back foot can be useful if a dog is using the foot to scratch a wound on their head or body. The bandage will help stop further skin trauma. Never dress a paw or leg without covering the toes. Leaving the toes out can cause them to swell, leading to pain. The dressing being applied in this video is an example of one that may be used to protect a cut pad and keep it clean. The small piece of cut sterile foam is placed over the wound using tape to loosely secure it. The dressing is applied to a clean wound. A small amount of cotton wool is placed in between the toes to prevent them from rubbing. Cotton wool can also be placed around the stopper pad and dew claw if the dressing is being left on for a period of time. Use a padded dressing as your first layer, for example, soft band, and work from the foot upwards. Note how to correctly start the dressing. Always keep the roll on top of the bandage and not underneath. Overlap each layer by around a half to two thirds. A conforming bandage is used as the next layer and is applied in the same way as the soft band, trying to keep equal tension. You can split the end of the bandage once applied and tie it to keep it secure. The final layer is a cohesive dressing. When applying this, always hold it in place with one hand while you stretch and release more of the bandage from the roll with the other hand. Make sure to do this before applying to the dog's leg. This way you will prevent it from becoming too tight. Cohesive dressings can irritate the skin and cause bandage sores, so finish this layer slightly below the conforming layer. Secure the dressing with some tape. I find Duraport most useful. Finally, check that you can get two fingers down into the dressing to ensure that it's not too tight. You can use a poo bag over the dressing when your dog goes outside to keep it clean and dry. Any additional layer such as this can cause excessive sweat buildup inside the dressing, so remove it when no longer needed. Surgical spirit is useful to spray onto the tape before removal. It makes it less sticky and easier to pull away from the fur, minimizing discomfort. I would always advise to use sterile dressing materials and never to apply cotton wool directly to the wound itself. Now in the case of excessive bleeding, you need to abandon that rule and use whatever you have to hand. So that might be a, a scarf or anything that you can use to apply pressure. You can see in the video, I am pinching the hairs up slightly as this can help the bandage to grip. You can adopt the same principles from the paw bandage and apply it to a tail bandage. I always find tape at the top useful to help hold it in place. So here are your do's and don'ts when bandaging. Do clean a wound prior to application. Use sterile materials. Check that it's not too tight. Change dressings intended for longer use regularly every 24 to 48 hours. Apply at the very minimum a conforming bandage as an underlayer before using a cohesive dressing over the top. And always have the roll on top of the bandage, not underneath. And here are the don'ts. Don't leave the foot out of the paw or leg dressing as it can cause swelling in the foot and toes leading to pain and a fat foot. Don't leave covers such as a poo bag over the dressing for long periods. Don't use bandages long term if you've not checked with your vet first. Don't apply cotton wool directly to a wound. And don't use cohesive dressings without having previous experience of using them. Bandaging can be a very useful tool if applied correctly. I would get yourself a conforming bandage and practice some of these bandages that we've spoken about in this section. Even go as far as to asking your vet or veterinary nurse 
at your next visit when your dog requires a bandage to walk you through the steps. And don't forget to now take the quiz and to download the guide to bandages.